Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about layering your character clothing in Character Creator 1.5. So we'll talk about the basics of layering, what it means and what you can do with it. Uh, we're going to have some very quirkily dressed characters in this tutorial, if that's even a word. But uh, let's get started first of all. We have our basic male uh, nude template on the screen right here. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go over here to clothing. And right now I'm currently in underwear. And you can see the underwear selection we have. Now pay attention to the little number in the bottom right corner of the icons here, uh, the thumbnails. You can see we have a number two right here. And for the bras and the tops, we have a number one. Now these indicate the distance or the layer of the clothing that is closest to the character's skin. So number one is going to be the very closest to the skin and it goes all the way up to number 16 where that's the furthest away from the skin, such as things such as overcoats or uh, uh, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and dress our character and see how we can kind of mess around with this a little bit first. So I'm going to just go ahead and load in some boxers for my character. And there's our boxers right there uh, applied to our character. So now he's got some underwear. Now he's half decent. Uh, let's go over here to uh, uh, pants for the next step here. Now notice with our pants, the basic uh, gene templates that are included with character creator, these have a number five on them. So that means these, those will be above, those will be placed above the underwear. So let's just go ahead and load in these jeans A here. And you can see those layer nicely over top of the underwear. So that's pretty simple, uh, pretty straightforward uh, for male characters anyways. Let's go over to our shirts then, uh, this little button right here. Now notice these regular dress shirts that come with Character Creator, those are on layer 10. So those are fair, a fair number of layers above the uh, pants layer, which is uh, number 5 if I recall. Let's take a look at some other options here. So I'm just going to load in the shirt first of all, um, just so we can see what it looks like. You can see it will billow nicely over top of the, uh, the pants right there. So we get a nice natural kind of billowing result. Uh, but let's take a look at some other options for clothing as well, for uh, tops. Let's go to uh, professional or essential clothing rather here. And you can see these camisoles for females are, are layer 7. And we have tank tops for men that are layer 7 as well. Let's just load in a tank top. See this guy wants to wear an undershirt underneath his shirt. Let's load that in at number 7. And you can see that will actually go below the shirt and if we take a look down here we can see that in fact now what's happening is we're getting a little bit of breakage on the mesh below uh, you can see the character's skin a little bit through there now if we go to uh, if we right click on our character's chest here we have the option to select the shirt or the tank top if we select the tank top and we go to conform you can see we can deselect hide inner mesh and what's going to happen there is it's going to basically show through a lot of the shirt. Um, and that's really not what we want in this case. Because the tank top is actually on, the, on a higher layer than the, uh, than the jeans. And uh, we can fix that later, but I'll show you how to do this uh, first. Let's re reapply the hide inner mesh. Now, if I wanted to kind of try and fix this um, little snafu down here, what I normally want to do is right-click on my character, and we're going to select the shirt this time. And then I'm going to go to conform and calculate collision. And what it'll do is it'll recalculate the collision. You can see it'll start billowing a little bit further down over top of our character's mesh right there. And we can fix it, you know, press it a few times. And if you get stuff that's still not, uh, you know, sticking uh, to the original shape, what you can do is just go to edit mesh mode. And then you can, you know, uh, for example, I'm going to control click all these little uh, sections over here, these faces. Press the W hotkey and you can just move them down like that. And then you can see that it becomes a little bit sharp, so we can just go ahead and relax that, and we get a nice uh, normal uh, billowing right there. So you can do that as well. Um, so let's go, go out of Edit Mesh Mode. There's another tutorial that goes into more detail on that, so I recommend checking that out if you're unfamiliar with it. And let's go to Back to Shirts. And in professional outfits, we have stuff like this closed collar long sleeve shirt, which is actually on layer 4. So this is actually on the layer below the tank top. If we go over to uh, closed collar sleeve shirts right here, we have these ones. Uh, let's just load one of these for fun. Let's just uh, go ahead and double click this. Uh, this green top, this uh, corporate looking top right there. And you can see it also places below the uh, over shirt, which is layer 10, because this one is layer 4. And so then we can select the shirt again. I uh, don't really have to right click it. Go to conform, calculate collision, recalculate collision. And it's going to calculate over top of that additional shirt now. So this guy basically has three layers of clothing underneath, and you can bundle them up with jackets and everything like that as well. Let's see what happens if we take the shirt and we delete it. You can see underneath that we now have a little bit of an issue because previously the shirt, um, these other items that were selected, 
they were their their inner mesh was hidden so the the inner mesh that we didn't need to see was hidden under the shirt so if we want to reveal that again i can just right click select my closed collar shirt i'll uh, go to conform and deselect hide inner mesh and that's going to reveal the shirt one more time and then we have to right click select the uh, tank top and uh, i told you there'd be some quirky dressing in this in this uh episode of this tutorial here and we press cal calculate collision a few times and we get you know the collision basically going over right top and then again you can edit the mesh for a few uh few shakes to get that uh, taken care of and then let's top it off with a uh with a suit jacket let's go to coats over here and under uh, professional outfits we have some uh field jackets that we can add on there as well we can give this guy a nice uh, uh orange firefighter or not a firefighter maybe construction uh, jackets or uh, winter jacket anyways Anyway, and that'll be placed over top of everything and we still get some breakage through so you just need to do the old, do the old conform thing a few times uh, calculate collision a few times and you should uh, be able to resolve that issue right there all right so that's your basics uh, for layering again just make, pay attention to the number in the bottom right that'll indicate the layer and how close it is to your character skin. I'm going to load in one project here. I'm going to select this demo project that I have prepared and let's go into character creator and just load it up. We don't need to save the current project. Now let's talk about a scenario where you might want to export your character as an FBX and then re-import it with uh, separate clothing and whatnot. Um, generally you would uh, export a naked, a naked character uh, to FBX and you would apply clothing to it in an external program like a 3D Coat or any modeling program you have and then weight it in, a, in another program like 3ds Max or Blender and then you would re-import it in. Let's go through that process hypothetically. We're not obviously going to do all that stuff because it takes forever but I'm just going to go to File, um, Export and I'm going to, or rather Export to FBX and we'll export our clothed character. We'll just call it uh, Lady, okay, or Crazy Lady, because she dresses so crazy. All right, and we're not going to select Delete Hidden Mesh. We're not going to do any of these options. We don't need any of them right now. Let's we'll go ahead and press OK. So what that did is it exported our uh, our characters in FBX. So we can go to like New Project, do whatever we want, and this is where the hypothetical situation comes in. Now we've gone into uh, Max or Maya or uh, ZBrush or whatever. And we've spent a few hours, you know, creating some uh, special clothing on our character, and we want to bring her back in into FBX format. So it's going to create an FBX file right here, and it's also going to create an FBX key file. So keep that in mind. That's for uh, DRM protection for your own uh, clothing designs. So you won't be able to import that back in unless you have this file right here. So it'll reapply that DRM once you've uh, imported it back in. So let's take crazylady.fbx. We can actually just import it in, or we can actually just go into Character Creator. I should show you this way. File, Import, and select the crazylady.fbx here. And there's our key file. Automatically finds it in the same directory. Imported cloth character. And just select Default. And what it'll come up with is this. So basically, you'll have all the meshes that you've applied to your character, um, certain levels and certain layers. Um, and here's the option where you can actually set the layer right off the bat. So I'm going to just keep these layers. You can change the layers here as well if you want. Notice we have all the way up to 17 in this case. Uh, 16, 17 are generally used for accessories. Um, like the tied up shirt, for example, is uh, at level 16. And we may have a warning here. The mesh is bound to the wrong bone. I think it's OK. Let's just go ahead and press OK. Oh, okay, so here's our character loaded in now. So we're going to take a look at two separate ways you can change the layer order of your character's clothing. Now the first way is simply clicking and dragging them in the layer order list. So let's take a look at the first glaring issue on our character, which is the shoes down here. You can see when they imported in, either the socks or the feet are too big for the shoes, or we have a layer order. Um, I believe it is the latter. So let's take a look at our, if we go up to window here, and go to cloth layer settings, let's take a look at our cloth order. Now before we get in, into too much detail on this, I want to load up this image right here and you can see right here, take a look at the level of uh, each individual item here. So on this level, uh, on this list right here, the things that are further down on the list, those are going to show above everything else. So cloth layer 18 and 17, those are going to be above all these other layers. And this is like the underwear uh, layer, this is the lowest layer right here. Now, there's two special uh, exceptions here. Notice that shoes one and shoes two, as well as gloves one and gloves two, are sort of like distributed randomly throughout this list. So if you have 
um, shoes right here, and your shoes are set to level two, shoes two, that means those are going to be above your pants and your skirts, which means if you have the shoes set to level two, they're going to be, your pants are going to be basically tucked into your uh, uh, shoes because they're at lower level, the shoes will show above the pants. Even though it only says shoes two, that means shoes two means it's above cloth eight. So keep that in mind. It's a little complicated, I know, but uh, you have gloves as well. You can select gloves underneath your shirt or gloves over top of your shirt. So gloves one will be basically underneath everything, all right? So underneath any sort of uh, pants or, or shirts or anything like that. But gloves two will be on top of everything. So those are gloves that, uh, you know, are even over top of the overcoats as well. All right, so keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at the cloth layer settings. Now, as I mentioned before, the reason that the socks are kind of breaking through the mesh there is because our soccer socks are actually on a higher level than the basketball shoes. On this list right here, the stuff at the top, the tied up t-shirt and the low rise shorts, those are going to be displayed on top. And the things down here at the lower, lower end, those are going to be displayed on the bottom. So what you can do, like I mentioned before, you can go into this settings uh, collision order right here and you can change the shoes to either one or two which correspond to the shoes one and the shoes two, which I showed you on that previous list. We'll close that down for now. And if I go to soccer socks and I go to collision order, you can see with the clothing, we have all these different layers that we can put the clothing on. So uh, just keep in mind that uh, shoes one and shoes two are not, they are at different levels right here. So there's shoes two right there and there's shoes one right there. Uh, if you have shoes one, your shoes are going to be on top of the socks on top of the uh, pants, or rather the pants are going to be on top of the shoes if you have shoes one, but if you have shoes two, your pants are going to be tucked into your shoes, all right? All right, so let's take a look at how the easiest way, the most uh, quick and intuitive way we can change the clothing layer uh, order. Now, we don't have to change any of these numbers. What we can do is we can simply take these basketball shoes and click and drag them on top of the soccer socks layer. So notice that the numbers don't change on the left-hand side. And nothing else changes because we need to run collision. So I'm going to select run collision here. And what you're going to see here is now the shoes are on top of the socks because I simply changed the layer uh, order. And we need to go to conform and we can uh, you know, calculate the collision of those shoes just so we get a better result. So they're kind of around the socks right there. And that's all we've done. Now keep in mind that when you use this method, when you click and drag in the cloth layer settings, it's, not, it's going to save uh, as a project, okay? So if, if you save it as a project, this project is going to retain this clothing order. However, if you want to save your basketball shoes as a custom, uh, custom clothing uh, item right here, that number is going to be, remain this number right here, so it's going to still be one. It's not going to change the order of the item as it appears. So if I wanted to save these basketball shoes right now, for example, I have them selected. I can go to uh, clothing right here and to custom, and just uh, select plus. You can see if I just press enter, they still have the number 01 in the bottom right, which indicates that they are still assigned to shoes 01. Now, if I wanted to change that, what I need to do is, uh, whoops, we need to go back here. Um, open our uh, cloth layer settings here again. What I would need to do is if I wanted to save them as basketball shoes as a level two shoe, I need to go and change this to collision order two, and then press okay. And that'll just take it up a little bit. And now if I, if I save it, notice now that we have these 0, 2 in the bottom right corner, okay? So if you want to save them as separate uh, levels on the overall layer list, you need to change them using this option right here, the collision order. So say, for example, I want this, uh, I want this you know, layer order to be retained. I don't want to be worrying about uh, saving uh, custom props or anything like that. I just want this entire outfit to be saved the way it is. I'm just going to go ahead and file and uh, save this project as, we'll just call it a crazy lady project. Why not? That sounds fine. Now, if I were to load in a different project, let's just load in some, uh, you know, professional outfit character, just some random one right here, like this PO10. I'm just going to load the entire project. And I have this character right here. So if I go ahead and find my crazy lady uh, character creator project, which is right here, and I open this one in character creator, and I bring it in. I can select, instead of load project, I can replace the costume, and I can replace it on this female character right here. And notice now that those shoes will still remain on top of the socks, as opposed to the order that we had them before. So that is maintained. If we select the shoes, go to window, cloth layer settings, you can see because we changed them to number two, they are still at number two, 
but they could have been at number one and they would retain that number one as well. So they'll retain the number despite what order you put them in. Okay, so that's uh, loading your projects. Now the second way, we're going to take a look at our character's uh, upper right here. There's a little, uh, if we right click our character, you can see there's a cat suit, which is this leather suit right here. There is the bunny female, which is the kind of underwear bathing suit item underneath. And CC Standard is, of course, the character uh, skin mesh. So let's go ahead and select the bunny female. Now, say for some reason our character is really quirky and she wanted to wear her bathing suit above her leather cat suit. Well, we can do that simply by going into a uh, window again, cloth layer settings, and you can see now it's at the bottom. Now, if we wanted it to be above the cat suit, all we would need to do, we could click and drag it like I did before, or we can just simply go up here to our collision order, and now we can change it to like level four, for example. And if we press OK and run collision, you can see now that the bunny female will be above the cat suit. However, we still do have this issue because the bunny female is above the cat suit. The cat suit itself doesn't have the proper hide or has the mesh hidden. So it's going to be hiding all this mesh area right here. So we can simply go to conform and deselect hide inner mesh. And you can see the rest of the mesh appear right there. And we probably want to, you know, take our bunny female and conform that calculate collision a few times on that. So we can get it above the uh, zipper and everything like that. You can just keep going with this all day long. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that. But the, pre the, the bunny female outfit previously was level 3. If you can recall, it's previously level 3. And if we want to save this as a custom, you know, onto layer 4, then what we can do is just go ahead to our uh, clothing again, uh, add a custom item. And now you can see as opposed to its original uh, number 3 layer, it is now on number four, which you can see uh, in the thumbnail on the bottom right. We call it uh, Bunny 4. Okay, so this is especially useful when you design your own clothing assets and you wish it to, to be compatible with another layer arrangement with other existing character creator cloth assets provided by Reillusion or other developers. Again, the click and drag method, if you save the item, the layer order will not be affected. However, this assign number uh, method if you save the, uh, if you assign the number to a different, uh, if you assign the cloth mesh to a different number layer, then it will be um, saved in your item as well. So that's the only difference between those two. Um, so that's about it uh, for this tutorial, guys. That's all I really wanted to uh, show you here. We got this weirdly dressed uh, woman with the bathing suit above her leather jacket there anyways. Um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope you enjoy all our Character Creator 1.5 tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.